Hello students, welcome to Mr. Sandwich Reads, and I am Mr. Sandwich, and today I'm going to be reading chapter 9 of Jerry Spinelli's Stargirl. In the Sonoran Desert, there are ponds. You could be standing in the middle of one and not know it, because the ponds are usually dry. Nor would you know that inches below your feet, frogs are sleeping. Their heart beats down to once or twice per minute. They lie dormant and waiting, these mud frogs, for without water their lives are incomplete, they are not fully themselves. For many months they sleep like this within the earth, and then the rain comes, and, hundred, and a hundred pairs of eyes pop out of the mud, and at night a hundred voices call across the moonlit water. It was, a, it was wonderful to see, wonderful to be in the middle of, we mud frogs awakening all around. We were awash in tiny attentions. Small gestures, words, empathies, thought to be extinct, came to life. For years the strangers among us had passed sullenly in the hallways. Now we looked, we nodded, we smiled. If someone got an A, others celebrated too. If someone sprained an ankle, others felt the pain. We discovered the color of each other's eyes. It was a rebellion she led, a rebellion for rather than against, for ourselves, for the dormant mud frogs we had been for so long. Kids whose voices had never been heard before spoke up in class. Letters to the editor filled a whole page of the, new, of the school newspaper's December edition. More than a hundred students tried out for the spring rev, rev, review. One kid started a camera club. Another wore hush puppies instead of sneakers. A plain, timid girl painted her toenails Kelly green. A boy showed up with purple hair. None of this was publicly acknowledged. There were no PA announcements, no TV coverage, no headlines in the Micah Times. MAHS students astir. Individuality erupts. But it was there. It was happening. I was used to peering through the lens to framing the picture. I could see it. I could feel it in myself. I felt lighter, unshackled, as if something had been carrying, I had been carrying had fallen away. But I didn't know what to do about it. There was no direction to my liberation. I had no urge to color my hair or trash my sneakers. So I just enjoyed the feeling and watched the once amorphous, amorphous student body separate itself into hundreds of individuals. The pronoun we itself seemed to crack and drift apart in pieces. Ironically, as we discovered and distinguished ourselves, a new collective came into being, a vitality, a presence, a spirit that had not been there before. It echoed from the rafters in the gym, go electrons. It sparkled in the water fountains. At the holiday assembly, the words of the alma mater had wings. It's a miracle, I gushed to Archie one day. He stood on the edge of his back porch. He did not turn. He pulled the pipe slowly from between his lips. He spoke as if Senior Suguaro were to the blazing mountains beyond. Best hope it's not, he said. The trouble with miracles is they don't last long. And the trouble with bad times is you can't sleep through them. It was a golden age those few weeks in December and January. How could I know that when the end came, I would be in the middle of it? All right. So a lot happens. This is really a turning point uh, in the novel and probably an opportunity for me to talk about conflict. So I'll post something about conflict soon. But we also see that the setting is changing a little bit. It's now December. Uh, and with that change, we've also seen a change in attitude among the student body. I'll leave it there. It is a good uh, turning point. I, I really do enjoy Stargirl. I've, I've taught this before. I've read this before. Um, so hopefully you've been enjoying following along and you'll continue to enjoy uh, to see where it goes. Uh, that was chapter nine of Jerry Spinelli's Stargirl. I hope you enjoyed. Keep following along and um, I'll post something shortly too on setting to add to that and uh, we'll talk a little about conflict. Okay.